So now that we're a little bit more confident with using Ableton, I wanted to talk about one of the most important plugins within Ableton that you're gonna be using a lot of. This plugin is called Simpler. Hello. Just to explain, what you're watching here is a clip from our Ableton Live 12 electronic music production video course. Check out the course curriculum and more lesson previews using the link below. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the video. And it's an audio sampler plugin. And all this means that is you load audio files into it and it will play them back for you in a bunch of different ways. We've already used Simpler inside of Drum Rack. If I go into instruments and load in the instrument called Drum Rack, when we load a sample into drum rack, it doesn't actually just load an audio file. It loads the instrument called Simpler and it puts the sample within Simpler itself. And what this means for drum rack is that you can actually load in synthesizers and other instruments as well into each of these individual cells. The main thing though is that drum rack uses Simpler to play back the samples that you load into it. So if we go into instruments, we can also load in just the plugin called Simpler in here, which I've already loaded up. You can see it is identical to the Simpler in Drum Rack. There is no difference in how the Simpler operates from the Simpler inside of Drum Rack, but we're gonna take a look at it in a slightly different light. So in order for it to work properly, we need to load in a sample. And I'm not gonna load in just any drum sample. I'm gonna load in a one shot and I'm gonna try and look for a one shot of a different instrument. For example, let's try a guitar to begin with. There we go. So I'm gonna pick this guitar acoustic C3. I'm gonna drag it into the area that says drop sample here. Now you will have probably heard when flicking through this list, there are some really nice samples that have chords built into them, as you can see. It even has the chord name just after the sample there, but this isn't gonna work very well for the technique that we're doing today. You wanna find an instrument that just plays one note. We will look at another instrument in a minute where it has multiple notes in there, but for now, just pick an instrument with one note. And once you've loaded this in, I'm gonna stick in one shot mode here and I'm gonna hit the record enable button on my simpler track. And now the way this differs to drum rack is I can now play this sample across my keyboard. So it takes the audio file that we loaded in of just that one single note and it maps it across the keyboard. So I can program in a brand new melodic sequence like a chord sequence or bass line using this note. But the main problem with doing this is that the one shot mode is monophonic. It only allows you to play one note at a time on this instrument. So if you're trying to program some chords, it won't let you do that. It will only play the last note that you play. Like if I play a chord here, it only plays one of those notes. So that's why we need to use some of the other modes within our simpler. And the one that we're gonna use for this example is the classic mode. Pretty much the same as one shot mode, but now we can play multiple voices, which are just notes at the same time. Now you can control how many voices are played by this voices counter on the right here. And to be honest, eight is probably the highest you'd really ever need to go to, even six, to be honest. But if you did want it to be one note at a time, you could also press number one at the top there. And the controls work in the same way within our classic sampler. So I can move the start point around. I can move my end point around as well by grabbing the end marker. Not very useful in this instance though, but it works in the same way. We still have the snap feature too, that will snap to the nearest zero crossing point, the nearest zero amplitude point in our waveform. But there are some other features, the loop feature we can use now in this classic mode. So if I turn this on, it actually looks a lot more like our one shot mode again. But what this has done is it's enabled the loop for our sample. And the loop is just that blue area 
in the middle. And we get controls underneath to change where that loop starts, how long it is, and even some extra fading features too. So if I play a note now, and we get to the end of the blue section, it's gonna continue just to play as long as I've got this note held down. If I play a chord, All the notes will start to loop in different cycles and this brings us back to the drum rack where we were pitching our drum samples up and down. In order for the simpler to pitch our guitar note up and down it does have to change the length of the note. When we play lower notes on the keyboard the note will last longer as we go up the keyboard it'll be shorter. So you can hear the loop is quite short if I play this high note much longer when we start to go down the keyboard. So if you start to play chords, each note looping at a different rate to one another. So we could turn on the warp feature over here on the right hand side and it works like the warp within our regular audio files but it means that all the notes will be the same length. For a audio file like this we want to choose complex. You can hear it works quite well in these kind of middle notes, but it sounds a bit off when we go up to the higher notes because we're really stretching the chord out. And we can also get a little bit creative with this. We can use the times two and the divide by two icons here to make the audio file longer. It sounds a bit weird at the beginning of our note, but if we bring the start marker in a little bit, You can get some nice results too but I want to really play around with the loop so I'm going to turn the warp off for now and I can zoom in and out on the waveform by clicking and dragging on the actual waveform click and drag up and down so the start point over here on the left hand side is similar to the sample start point but it doesn't move that flag at the beginning as you can see it will still play from that point onwards and the same goes for the length at the end this will also bring the end marker in but without actually bringing the end marker in from the right hand side the most important one though is the one in the middle here the loop so if we bring the loop down I'm going to bring the length down as well the idea with this loop is that with a sample like this if you keep the note held down the sample will eventually stop playing if we turn the loop off, it will stop playing once it gets to the silent part over here. If we turn the loop on though, let's make the loop a little bit shorter again. We can also use the fade on the right here and I'm going to make the loop a bit longer just so we can see this. If I bring the fade up, it's going to add a fade out when the loop gets near to the end of the loop section. And at the same time as this part fading out, it will fade in this section at the beginning. So these darker blue sections happen at the same time. And if we go back to what we had before, we turn the fade up. You can hear it really helps with those plucky percussive sounds. And now I can hold this note, the, this chord, sorry, down as long as I want. So you can extend out the length of a note like our guitar note here, but we could also just make a brand new sound by bringing in the start marker and readjusting our loop over here. It almost sounds like an organ now. We can also reverse the sample similar to our audio editor by right clicking on the background and going to reverse sample. We're going to have to move our start and end positions around a little bit. And now we're working in the opposite direction as you can see. 
loads of interesting things that we can do. I'm going to revert back to how it was before though. If we come over to the right hand side, we've got these tiny arrows over here and one of the hot swap buttons that we've seen before. So we can swap the sample out, retaining the loop position and all the other stuff. Let's try though the right arrow here, which is pick the, like the next similar sound, similar to in the drum rack. You can see it's picked an electric guitar harmonic. Let's set up our loop region again. I'm going to bring the start point forward a bit because I don't like the twang at the beginning. And you'll notice how the fade doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's slightly grayed out and that's just because the warp is turned on. So I'm going to turn the warp off.